Hey guys, OneClo here. I hope you're doing well and all right. I'm a little bit sick, but nevertheless, we want to take a look on running your own Bitcoin node. So let's get started. So now that you're here, if you are still wondering why you should run your own node, check out the video up here somewhere and make sure to watch it. It's a short one and it should give you a quick explanation of why you should run your own node. Today, I brought two things with me, a mini PC and a Raspberry Pi 5. And while you want to run your own node, there are a couple of decisions that you need to make. And this depends on what you want to achieve. Let's say, for example, you just want to run your own node, take a look on your own mempool that you do run on your node, and you want to connect your wallet with it. You're mostly fine with using just something like a Raspberry Pi 5, attaching an NVMe to it, like I did here with this NVMe extension thingy, and then you're good to go. But when you want to do more stuff with it, like running your own pool on it, and then adding other things or hosting other services as well, I highly recommend something like a mini PC, like this one here. And links to everything will be down in the video description below so that you can check out these things yourself. And with that, we can right away jump into this because what I want to do is I want to quickly screw this one open and I want to go with you over the steps that you need to do because today we want to install the firmware called Start9 OS. And the reason for that are pretty simple. It is highly sophisticated. It is focused on privacy. And that's the reason why I do like it and why I do use it daily. So with the Raspberry Pi 5 to the side, I quickly unscrewed all the screws, like from the bottom, from this mini PC here, and I opened it up. And if you now do take a look on the inside here, you do see there are a couple of components. And basically the only thing that we need to do is we need to remove the NVMe if there is one in there and change it to one that meets our requirements. And basically just change it to another one that meets our requirements or you even do get one with enough storage on it already. Most of the mini PCs that are sold these days, they usually do have an NVMe in it with like 500 gigabytes of storage, which is not enough for a Bitcoin node. If you wanna to start today, I would highly recommend yourself to get something like a two terabyte NVMe or even a four terabyte NVMe, depending on how long you think you will run this node. I myself have a one terabyte drive now in here because I just want to show it to you but in my node that I do have over in my rack I do have a two terabyte drive in there because I want to run it for a little bit longer and I might need to swap this in the future as well but don't be scared even though if you do have a one terabyte drive in there this will still be plenty and still be enough for the next couple of years maybe for the next one and a half years after that you would need to change it to a bigger drive but don't worry, I will have a video for that as well and show you how you can change it and how you can securely move your data from one drive to another one. So we now swapped the NVMe here so we can put back the bottom lip on the device and then we can start over on the PC because all we now need to do is we need to download a little bit of software put it on a USB stick, then you do see on the back side we do have a couple of connections for power, for ethernet and USB connections. All we need to do is pretty simple. We just need to plug in the USB drive to this puppy here and then we can install the firmware. So let's get over to my PC and let me show you how to do that. So now we are over at the PC and we want to take a look on the website of start9.com. So you can find this website on start9.com. That's basically the link to the website. On here, you will find plenty of information on how you will take back control over your hardware as well as over your Bitcoin sovereignty in general. Plenty of lots of information on here and great information. So I do highly recommend to check this website out and especially go over there and read through the documentation because that's what we want to do anyway because what we want to do is we want to connect a USB drive and use this to flash the mini PC that I just showed you before. So without further ado, let's hop over to the docs. If you do click on it, we will be forwarded to the docs and on here what we want to do is we want to click on DIY guide. 
So click on that and on here you do see everything that you actually do need. Uh, there's the motivation of why you should do that, yada yada. We want to dive into it. We want to select the DIY x86 because we're using a normal CPU like AMD or Intel CPU. We're not using an ARM CPU. So let's click on that. And on this page here, you already do get plenty of information on what you need and what is recommended. As you do see, there are minimum U, uh, OS requirements and recommended OS requirements as well. So you do see one terabyte of storage or above is actually recommended. And as well as a little bit of RAM or other things. You could run it with something a little bit less powerful like you do see here and enable something like a prune node. But this is a completely other topic and we don't want to dive into that. So let's scroll down and let's click on flashing x86. So what do we get here? We get plenty of information, but the first thing they actually guide us over to is the GitHub release page. And this is also what we want to take a look on. They do inform you and give you a little bit of information about what is what. We do have the server pure and the server one. The server one is basically a firmware that they do write for their specific hardware that they do release because you can also purchase a device already flashed with the firmware on it from them but we are totally on the diy side so we want to do it on our own and as well as they do state here uh, on the non-free version is closed source hard uh, software so yeah i don't want to do that i'm not looking into anything that is not open source so therefore let's dive into the github release page shall we let's click on this and you do see here we do have the latest release from november 21 2023 which is okay it's it's just the firmware and they are currently in a major change they are looking to change start os that is how the firmware is called to a completely new one i don't know when this will drop i do have high hopes that this will happen this year but we will see so if we do scroll down a little bit, we do see a couple of ISO files or image.gz files. What we want to take is this one here, the start OS 035.1 dash and so on. And the ISO file is roughly one gigabyte. We want to click on it and we want to download it. So let's quickly do that. This will take a couple of seconds. So now that the download is done, we can go back to the documentation page and take a look on what they do tell us here. So an optional thing that you could do is actually verify that you have downloaded the correct version and they provide you the Linux instructions, the Mac instructions, and as well the Windows instructions, which is totally fine. And if you want to do that, go for it. It is a great thing to do if you want to check it and make sure that you have downloaded the correct thing. Otherwise, we can use a flashing tool to actually flash now this firmware to our USB drive. And what I do have here with me is, uh, or what we do see here is they do recommend something like Berliner Etcher. If you're on Windows or Mac, you can totally use that. What I'm gonna use in this video is the Raspberry Pi imager. You probably do know this. Uh, I already selected the storage. Uh, this is my USB drive. And now for the operating system, what we can do is we can scroll down here and we can select a use custom. And if I now go over to downloads, I do see there's the start nine. If we do click on it, it says start OS. I can click on next. Uh, would you like the customization? No, I don't want to use uh, any customization settings. Existing data will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I want to continue. And now it is writing to this drive. So let's quickly wait for that. So now everything has been written to the USB drive. And what we want to do now is we want to take a look back again on the documentation. If you do scroll down here, now we get into the install section. Now it tells us to remove the newly fresh, flashed USB drive from the PC and plug it into the new server. And what we want to do is power it on and boot from the USB drive, depending on the settings of your mini PC. If there are a couple of requirements, basically on the BIOS needed, you might need to change to another monitor or another, and you might need to change a couple of things in the BIOS, such as uh, changing it over to 
allow booting from a USB drive and disabling something like secure boot. But you do get this tip here. Like occasionally you may need to make some changes to your BIOS, such as turning off secure boot or allowing USB boot for install. See community hub for guides and get or to get help, which is great. So what we want to do now is I will quickly plug in this USB drive into it and then what we want to do is we want to wait a couple of seconds and we want to go over to this page here, HTTP column slash slash start dot local. So let's quickly do that and let's see if this works. So now I have set up everything. I plugged in the USB drive and the power on the mini PC. And now let's hop over to the HTTP column slash slash start dot local. Let's quickly do that. And here we go. We already do get a disk that we can select. So let's click on that. And we want to do install start OS action. This will completely erase the disk unknown vendor and install start OS in place. Yes, continue installing start OS. Let's quickly wait for that and then we will see what will happen. Here we go. We are already done. This took roughly 45 seconds and it tells us remove the USB stick and reboot the device to be using your new start nine server. So let's quickly click on reboot and let me unplug the USB drive. All right, I did so. And let's see if this actually refreshes or not. All right, here we go. I quickly refresh the page and here we are. We can click on start fresh or we can click on recover. The recover section or this recover option will be something for the next video where I will show you how you can move your data from your old hard drive to your new one, which probably does have more storage than the previous one. But what we want to do today is we want to click on start fresh. So we click on that. We do select our drive and now we need to enter a password and I will just give it a password that is super helpful. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, must be 12 characters or greater. Okay, hello, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is totally secure. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we can click on finish. Now this initializing start OS, you should definitely use a password which is uh, stronger than that. And I have noticed, I think you cannot use any of these special characters on this setup, if I'm not mistaken but maybe it was just the issue of having a German keyboard. I don't know, could be, could be the thing, but let's quickly wait for the initialization. And after that, we will take another look on to it. And here we go. We are already done and the setup is complete, which is fantastic. So what we can do is we can now download the address info start.local and what we can do with it, we can use this one here and install a root certificate because now we need to move over to something that is more secure and therefore you need to handle certificates. So we can click on download, which will give us a HTML. Uh, we click on keep and we can trust your root certificate. And here we go. This is now the new name. In my case, I do see it's called grazing detail local. All right, so this is an important thing that you need to do. It is a little bit different depending on the operating system that you do use. I, in my case here, I use a Linux PC and you might use Windows or Mac, but there are plenty of instructions and guides. Let's quickly click on download and download this, this certificate. Let's click on keep. And here are a couple of instructions. So let's quickly view them, click on view instructions and how to do that. So what do we have here? Downloading the certificate. Yeah, we did this already. To download this, uh, just click on the instructions from the status HTML file. Yes, correct. Let's, let's quickly click on that because I've never done this. We do have this HTML page here. Download certificate. Here you go. You could use this. Uh, it also guides you over to the onion address, which is interesting, but obviously this is just for purpose of showing this video. So this one will not be available anywhere to anybody else. It will only be available to me. So here you can also download the certificate if you download the HTML file, but obviously we don't want to do that. We have downloaded the certificate here and we want to click on the instructions on how to install this. So here, how you can do this for trusting. So they do give you guides on Linux, Mac, 
Windows, Android, and iOS. It's straightforward. Let's quickly click on Linux. You do see here they require you to update and install a couple of things. And what you want to do is you want to create a, a directory for it and you want to copy over the CRT file into it and then you want to update the certificates. So if I open up myself a terminal and if I quickly go over to my user share and then I should have certificates already and I should have start nine already in there and I could copy over certificate file. Wait, let's quickly go over to my downloads. All right, let me put in my password for that. And now it's over there. If you do go over to this one here, we should see that I do have my grazing CRT in here. So this is perfect. What we can do now is uh, we can add this with sudo bash dash C and then echo start nine wait echo i need to have this correct character start nine slash grazing dash detail dot crt and we want to add it into the slash etc slash ca certificates dot conf and we want to do that and now we can sudo update ca certificates now it's checking for that it added it onto it and what we now should be able is we should be able to open this page here now you do see it is still not working and you're wondering why okay now because i'm using brave we need to do a final step if you're using chrome or brave complete this final step and they do tell you what to do so we need to go over to setting certificates and this is basically pretty simple if we do open up our settings we go over to privacy and security and then into security and in here we have managed certificates we can go to authorities and we can enable this and tell it to be trusted one second we need to select the authorities tab and import it grazing detail open trust this certificate everywhere okay let me quickly remove that here and let's quickly import it back again. We trust everything of it. And now if you do open up this page, control shift R, it should give us the thing that we can log in. And now you have a secure connection to your node. And if you now type in our absolutely secure password, we do see we are logged in. And here starts the beauty. The probably most important thing you want to do is go over to marketplace and install bitcoin core just install it clicking on it begin install you can view it it is downloading the basic instruction it's quickly validating it it's unpacking it on the server already it says it needs some configuration we tell them to save it and now you can start it and that's how easy you get started with setting up your own node at home without any hurdle. It now starts syncing. This might take a little bit of time. Uh, they do state this may take several days. When I did this the first time with Start9, it took me six hours. It was blazing fast. So I really love this version of Start9 and I'm really looking forward for the new version that they hopefully will release this year. But we never know when they will do. I just hope it will happen this year. But till then, I hope this was re really informational. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you do have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. And I hopefully will create new and amazing videos for you. Till then, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.